Take your Bibles to the book of John, if you will. When you're young, you don't think a whole lot about heaven, about death, about dying. But along the roads of life, see a lot of detours that make you begin to think more about it. The older you get, the less the things of this world means. There was a time I had an idea that I liked to have about 20 acres of ground. And I could do this, that, and the other on it, you know. That's when I was young. Got a little bit older. I thought, well, what would I do with it? <laughs> I mean, I, I can't even walk around an acre. Uh, so it wouldn't do me no much good. Uh, but a lot of things in life that uh, sometimes looks good isn't everything that it looks to be. But truly, heaven looks sweeter all the time. If, if uh, Judy was here right now, she could surely tell you that. Heaven looking sweeter. Another song says, 
what is it, sweeter today than it was yesterday, or something like this. And uh, so I hear people say all the time, I can't wait to go to heaven. Uh, I know what they mean. It's like the guy went around witnessing and he saw some boys standing there and he went up to this little boy and asked him, said, would you like to go to heaven, son? The little boy said, no. I said, you mean you don't want to go to heaven? He said, no. And he talked to some other people and they said, yes. He come back to that little boy and said, you sure that you don't want to go to heaven? The little boy said, well, yeah, I want to go to heaven, but I thought you was taking a bus load today. <laughs> well, we, we want to go, but uh, in God's timing, in God's timing. Tonight, if you will, we're going to start in the book of John. Tonight, I've got about a dozen titles to the message, I guess. Uh, we could use any of them. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, that, that's true, and I'm glad of that. Uh, our God is able, uh, but different, so I don't, I don't care what we call the title of it. Uh, the Bible in a nutshell, I guess that might be where we'll be tonight. But I'm in the book of John to start with. Probably the most familiar verse in the Bible. If not, it's one of the very top ones. But in John chapter 3, instead of starting with verse 16, I want to start with verse 14. It says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Verse 15 <clears throat> that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because... He hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Skip down to verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. A person that does not believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, a person that does not believe, and of course, to those who believe on his name, it's to those that he gives the power to become the sons of God, and if a person does not accept Jesus Christ as a Savior, then the wrath of God abideth on him, and that eternally. A person will, without Jesus Christ, spend an eternity in a devil's hell. People say, well, preacher, we don't believe that. But you know, the truth, friends, it don't matter whether you believe it or not. It's still true. 
is still true. We say, well, I, you know, the new theologians tell us that the Bible's not real. And you heard within the last two weeks a man who claimed to be, I said claim, to be a Baptist preacher stood up and said the Bible is not real. The Bible is not real. My friend, I say to you today, the Bible has always been real. It's still real today. What it says is still true. What it says will be true tomorrow. And what it says will be true throughout eternity. Now, tonight, we hold the Bible in our hands. And it's a pretty good-sized book. Got a lot of pages in it. It starts off in Genesis 1, runs all through the books of Moses, on through some 39 books called the Old Testament. Then we come in 400 years later, 400 years between the Old Testament and New Testament. We find that the Gospels begin here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we find the Pauline epistles and right on through till we come to the book of the Revelation. In this Bible, it tells us about the past. It tells us about the present. It tells us about the future. It tells us where we came from, and it tells us where we're going. My friend, this book that we hold tonight, this is the book of the book. This is the book of the ages. Now, it took some 40 writers, some 1,600 years, all writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God to write this book. But tonight, we're going to take the Bible in a nutshell. We're going to... Look, what the Bible is. Now, the Bible tells us a lot of things, my friend. And you know, there's a lot of things in there. Now, don't, don't, don't take wrong what I'm going to say now. A lot of things we can get by without understanding. I have a lot of preachers, a lot of people ask me all about the things in Daniel and everything in Revelation. And, you know, I... Uh, as I said this morning, the devil is a liar. And one thing I don't want to do is lie about it. But my friend, you know what? I don't understand all the Bible. Someone says, well, I do. Well, I don't think they're telling the truth. Because no one fully understands the Word of God. But that part don't matter. But there's some things you do not want to miss in the Word of God. Tonight, the gospel of the Bible in a nutshell, and by the way, the preacher of old many years ago, I believe it may have been John Owens. I'm not sure on that. Uh, but he said that the Bible, and then he brought it down farther, and he said John 3.16 is the gospel in a nutshell. The, it tells us about it. But tonight I want to uh, just take and... Look, and I say to you, the book that we have in our hands tonight, it's the book of all books. Brother Leonard Moody, home in heaven now. But Leonard wrote a song uh, a number of uh, uh, years ago, and he entitled the song, The Book of the Ages. <laughs> it's what it is. It's the book of the ages. And... Uh, the book you hold in your hand is the book of all books. They say that the science books, I guess in France, there's a big library, and uh, uh, I don't know how big, I don't know much about it anymore. But it had the books of science and history and all in it. But it was said that by the time a book got to the shelf of that library, it was already out of date. <laughs> Think about that. The books, and at the time we get them and read them, the science books, uh, 
they're already out of date. Now, you're going to be thrilled to know this, but what was in the last month, they found a stone, a rock, that was said to be some kind of a, a prehistoric animal, and uh, it was only four million years ago. And they got it figured out, and that says no proven evolution and all. My friend, it don't prove anything except those people crazy. I mean, it's not right. This book here, it's not near that old, but it is the book of the ages. Now, in this book, we find everything we need, and tonight, that's what we're going to look at very early. Father, just touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch my tongue, Lord. Just let us speak what you would have. Touch the hearts. Lord, if there is one unsaved, Lord, what a day for it to be their day of salvation. May they come. May you come to the Lord if you're unsaved. And Christians, let's just look and see what God has done for us. In Christ's name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. This book tells us about creation. If you will, the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Uh, again, now, we can't cover 66 books and everything uh, in between and still be out of here by midnight. So uh, we won't try to uh, cover all of it, but I just want you to see a few things and to let it come to our mind. In the book of Genesis, we find this Bible tells us about creation. Verse 1 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In that verse right there, God has uh, refuted probably uh, more libraries than anyone can think about in that one verse. They gripe and complain and lie and everything else about how the world began and they go on and on, the farther they go, the more they don't know. But God told us this in one verse. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We well, say, preacher, when it was the beginning? It don't matter. <laughs> What's it matter? Because in the beginning, God was there. So it doesn't matter. Or at least it doesn't to me. Uh, I believe uh, the days of creation, all like the Bible says. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, we find that this book tells us about his creation. He created on for five days, as we know, and then we find that he created the supreme being, he's for, uh, his uh, top of the creation, if you will, man and woman. And uh, so we, we find that God created man. We find that this Bible tells us uh, uh, how he created man. In uh, one Genesis 1 and about verse number 26, uh, and 20, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now a lot of the fighting going on today, he, he answered it right there. I mean, man, there, uh, we, we've seen the last few weeks trying to pass laws again where men can be women, women can be men, and women can go to the men's restroom, and uh, the men can go in the ladies' restroom. To start with, how stupid could you be? <laughs> I mean, but that's beside the point. But you say, well, preacher, is it right? Well, what did God say? He said there that he created man, male, and female created he then. That's the answer right there. Uh, 
You, you can pass all the laws you want, but there is no one else outside of a man and a woman. That's it. That's it. That's it. Maybe I ought to run for president. I mean, maybe I ought to be the one in there because at least I'm dumb enough to know that there is nothing more than the Word of God. God created. He created male and female. Now, I'm kind of glad of that. I, I'm, well, certainly I'm glad that God didn't create two males because if he was, did, none of us would be here. Someone said a while back where they was trying to get it where uh, these that tried to change the sex and all, that they could uh, adopt children. Uh, someone asked me if it's right or wrong. Well, I, I simply said, well, I, I, I don't believe it. Let them produce their own. Let them produce their own. God made man. He created male and female. Why? For recreation. God. Answer that question. It was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I mean, he, he just made it plain right there. And then we find that he tells us where they were created at. The Bible tells us that God created them there and put them in the garden of Eden. My, what a place it must have been. The Bible tells us and teaches us that it was a garden of perfection. Uh, it was a garden that had no weeds. Boy, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Mm. It was a, a, a garden that had the flowers with no thorns on it. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, and really, we couldn't even begin to tell you how beautiful it really was. But something happened. And the Bible tells us then in chapter 3, it tells us about man. It tells us about his sin. It tells us about his fall. In Genesis 3, 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And they gave also, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, as we said this morning, God lied to Eve. Uh, uh, the devil will always place doubts in your mind, and he did Eve. We find, they find that God said he, or Satan said God didn't really mean what he said, and uh, but God did. They ate of that one tree that God said not to. Someone said it was an apple tree that was a problem. Not really. It was the pear on the ground that was the problem in Adam and Eve themselves. But uh, they disobeyed God. They sinned. And because of their sin, they were separated from God. Can you imagine that, walking with God? Evening time, God would come to walk with them, talk with them. But then Satan came, deceived them, lied to them. Eve took of that, or took of that tree. Then Adam joined her. Because of that, they were separated from God. Adam, where art thou? Now, God didn't say that, that he might know where they are. God said that, that Adam and Eve could see where they are. They're now away from God. How terrible, how terrible. Because of that, 
man was driven out of the garden, was driven out of the garden of Edom. Genesis chapter 1, verse 23, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken, driven out of of that garden. The Bible tells us that they sin. The Bible tells us that sin, that all unrighteousness is sin, not some. First John five seventeen says all, all unrighteousness is sin. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23, the first part says, for the wages of sin is death. They sinned in the garden, disobeyed God. They sinned, separated from God. They were driven from the garden out of the presence of God. And my friend, that sin had a wage on it, had a price on that sin. And the Bible says and tells us in Romans 5, and I mentioned this morning, by one man sin entered into the world, and therefore by one then death has passed upon all folks. Wage is the price of sin. The Bible says that while the wages of sin is death, think about that now. The wages of sin is death, but God. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Gave his son Jesus, to pay the wages of our sin, to pay the price, the cost of the sins of all people. Mm. That's love. That's love. But this same Bible tells us not only did God give his son, the Bible tells us that Jesus paid that sin debt. Now you remember, Jesus did not have to go to the cross. I mean, he went to the cross freely. He went there because he loved us. He went to that cross, and he paid a debt he did not owe. He paid a debt that we owed and could not pay. Jesus went to that cross and died for me. He died for you. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, who his own self, Jesus, who his own self bear our sins, our sins, my sins, your sins, your, 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 he paid the sin of every person that's ever been born of man. He paid that sin debt. And he paid that price in his own body on the tree. Romans, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. My, what love God had, what love Jesus had for you and I. The Bible tells us that while Jesus died for our sins, while Jesus was buried, buried as any other person 
as I mentioned Wednesday night, the tombs were used mostly. But they put Jesus in that tomb. They rolled the stone up to the door. Jesus was dead. Remember those ladies went out to the tomb to finish preparing him for the burial. But when they got there, they found what they never expected. They expected to find a body of Jesus. But when they got there, the stone was rolled away. They kind of looked in and they found an angel. And the angel simply said, He is not here. He is risen. He is risen. And my friend, he was risen because that God had accepted the payment that he made for our sins. The Bible says in Romans 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Now watch it. And shall believe in thine heart. Believe in thine heart that God hath raised him. That body was not stolen, my friend. God raised him from the grave. God raised him from the dead. The Bible says, if thou shalt believe that, thou shalt be saved. Hmm. The Bible tells us that when a sinner like Roy Maple, a sinner, a sinner, put your name in. When a sinner like you and I believes with the heart we believe what Jesus did for us we believe that on that cross he didn't die for his own self he died for you and I we believe that from the heart we believe that he was crucified we believe that he was buried and we must believe that he arose from the grave you see the death the burial and the resurrection first corinthians 15 tells us that the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the gospel. And the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe. Power. You can take all the dynamite. You can take all the power that you can think of. But I'll tell you what. There's nothing like the power of the gospel because that gospel belief in his finished work is what saves a soul believe him in what he did for you now when we trust him accept him then God no longer sees our sin now, just because you get saved don't mean you don't sin. Wow. 
Now, we shouldn't want to sin. But the truth is, there'll never be a day that you don't sin until you spend that first day in heaven. You say, well, preacher, you mean we can go sin all we want? Yeah, but if you're really saved, you don't want to sin at all. God no longer sees our sin because... God looks down. He sees the blood of Jesus. Took our place. Christ now says, Father, I've already paid for Roy Maple's sin. I've already paid for Daryl's sin, for Hobie's sin. I've already paid it. Lord, God, my Father, put their sin to my account. <laughs> put it on my account. The songwriter wrote one of the songs I love. It says, like Omnesimus, I ran away. And I guess I thought I'd never pay for all of my sins. Where would I begin? But the hour came and I was found. The law had come and I was bound. I could not run what could be done. And then was heard to say, put that on my account. <laughs> Here's what the Savior said. Put that on my account and cancel all the debt. My sins were all so bad and great was their amount. But now I'm free and glad. They're all on Christ accounts. Oh, how great the debt of sin I owed. As I traveled down life's weary road, unmindful of God's wondrous love. But he loved me still, though vile I'd done to repay my debt. He gave his son to die for me. He set me free. Put that on my account is what the Savior said. Put that on my account and cancel all the debt. And oh, my sins were all so bad. And great was their amount. But now I'm free and glad that they're all on Christ's account. Well, the old account is settled now. And at Jesus' feet, I humbly bow. Oh, bless his name. He bore all my shame. But wait. There's even more than this. He has given me his righteousness. All of this for me. How can it be? Put that on my account, is what the Savior said. Put that on my account and cancel all the debt. My sins were all so bad. And great and many was their account. But now, but now, I'm free and glad that they're all on Christ's account.
child of God? Every sin must be paid for. Either you pay or you accept Christ's payment. Jesus went to that cross and he paid it all. Now all of those sins, oh, how bad. Oh, so bad was our sin and many was their count. The child of God, when we get saved, when we accept Christ as our Savior, now we're free <laughs> and glad that they're all on Christ's account. Jesus loves me. This I know. <laughs> I've told the story often, and you folks, many of you remember where we used to go to the stores. This is before Kroger's and all these came out. Just little stores, and we'd walk in, we'd go to the store, and for mom, and walk over there, and mom said she needed a pound of sugar or whatever it was. So you'd tell the one, the, clerk there so they'd get you the pound of sugar and then they had a little book that they'd take out and they'd write on that ledger up the top it's got the name of Dennis Maple and family he'd take that little book out and he'd write on that first line, one pound of sugar, 17 cents. Well, wouldn't that be nice today? We go back in, or mom send my sister, or one of them in, and need a pound of bologna. One pound of bologna. Just write it down. Do that all week. All week. Didn't have to have a penny. Didn't have to have anything. But all come the end of the week. You come payday. Mom and dad would walk into that old store. They would take out the clerk. The owner of the store would take out that book, that ledger book. Dennis Henry Maple. Take that book out and start going down, adding up the cost for everything that we had bought that week. And down at the bottom, it would be totaled $3.33. By the way, that was a lot in those days. But then the clerk or the owner would take and write on that ledger front. Paid in full. Folks, Jesus paid it all and our sin is not on our account Christ put it on his account he paid for our sins and the Bible tells us we can rejoice why we can rejoice because our sins are no longer on our account Thank God he loved us. Thank God he paid it all, putting it all on his account. And if you have accepted Christ, your sins have been put on his account. 
And when that day comes, and it will come, when death comes, you have accepted him, you will go to heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You won't go to heaven because anything good you or I done. Not a done. But thank God it's all on his account. <laughs> Child of God passes away. He's home with Jesus. <clears throat> home with Jesus. The song was just sung. Heaven <laughs> sounding better all the time. Glad we don't have to worry about eternity because Jesus took my sins and took your sins because he loved us, he died for us, he arose, and my friend, he's coming for us. <laughs> he's coming one day. No doubt in my mind, that day is soon. But you see, the Bible simply tells us all about us. It tells us what we are. and tells us what the future is. You say, preacher, when is that date in the future? Well, that's not important. You see, God didn't give us things that aren't important. He just said, in the beginning, God created. When is that? It's not important. <laughs> you could tell me it was such and such a time, and I couldn't look it up. Google wouldn't even know the answer to that because God was the only one there. In the beginning, my friend, in the ending, he's still the one. Amen. Are your sins on his account? Have you turned them to Jesus? And say, friend, he'll still put your sins on his account. He'll still receive you he's already paid for your sins but would you receive him as your savior and Christians I tell you Jesus loves us and this we know but do we really love him do we really 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 love him how do we know? He said, if you love me, <laughs> if you love me, keep my commandments. I mean, he put it plain and simple. If you love me, keep my commandments. Child of God, I'm glad that I have a Savior. that I have a home in heaven. Amen. Like that little boy, we're not really looking to take a bus load today, but I tell you, it's good to know when it's time that you got a home. Amen. At Calvary, before we enter, Amen. my friend, heaven is where we'll be and it will be throughout eternity. Every head bowed and every eye closed. As we stand, and my friends, you know the need in your life. God has spoken for any reason. I just ask you to let the Lord have your way, his way in your life tonight. Without Jesus here or out on the airwaves, if you're not saved, my friend, trust him. He paid your debt, paid your sin, died on the cross. 
was buried and rose again. And God accepted what Jesus did for you by bringing him up out of the grave. The question today is, will you accept what he did for you? Will you come as the pianist plays? <coughs> Will you come? Will you thank him? Christ said, put it all on my account. One more verse. Listen, the Lord's speaking. Why don't you let him have his way? Some of you are just fighting. Afraid to let God have his way in your life. You like the driver's seat. God never be the co-pilot. Will you give him the seat? Give him your life. Will you? Remember Tuesday at 10 o'clock, viewing for Brother Bill Lindsay, 11 o'clock, the funeral. If you can get there, please do so. Wednesday night, midweek service. Pray you'll be here. We love you. God bless you, each and every one. Brother Ken Frazier, if you would, Ken, dismiss us in prayer.